Hello everyone. The book of Isaiah was written 800 years before Christ. Isaiah appeared as God's prophet when his nation Judah was in a great political turmoil and immersed in sin. The prophet urged his people to repent from their sins and return to God. He also foretold the coming of the Messiah. He predicted that the Messiah would bring hope, peace, joy, love and light to all people. As we were preparing for the celebration of the birth of Jesus, we read and reflected very much on his messianic prophecies that he would be born of a virgin, be an heir to the throne of David, and that Gentiles would seek him and he would have his way prepared. In today's first reading we hear, Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruise to read he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Friends, the Lord introduces someone as his servant who would carry out his work on earth. Who is the servant the Lord is speaking about? The scriptures mention many people such as Abraham, Moses, David, Job, the prophets and even the whole nation of Israel as God's servants. Therefore, some believe that the servant in today's text refers to Cyrus, the Persian king, who liberated the Jewish people from their Assyrian and Babylonian captivity and allowed them to return to Jerusalem to rebuild their city and its temple. So there were indeed many faithful servants. But for Isaiah this time, the Lord speaks about his servant in a very special way. The servant of the Lord is the chosen and anointed one, and he would not cry out, nor shout, but speak softly, kindly, and tenderly to people. The Lord says, A bruise to read he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth. A bruise to read represents the weak and depressed in spirit, the lowly and dejected. God's servant would deal with such people tenderly and not violently. A smoldering wick means a wick with a dying flame. So God's servant would not quench such a flame but protects it however feeble and dim it is. In other words, his servant is full of love and compassion. He is humble and gentle, yet strong and resolved to bring justice to all nations despite their unworthiness, weaknesses and shortcomings. After 700 years, all the prophecies of Isaiah concerning the Messiah and salvation began to be fulfilled in the person of Jesus. In today's Gospel, Matthew testifies that the prophecy of Isaiah on the Messiah as the servant of God therefore refers to none but Jesus. Matthew recalls the words of Isaiah, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. As Jesus is coming up from the water of the river Jordan after his baptism, the Spirit of God descends upon him and a voice from the heavens says, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. These are the very same words which we read at the time of the transfiguration of Jesus shortly before his suffering on the cross. Both times the voice of God, the Father, acknowledges his Son 
with whom he is well pleased and confirms and approves of his mission on earth. So, God is pleased with his servant son Jesus' commitment to deliver his people from sin and as well as his readiness to accept the cross to fulfill his mission. God is pleased that his servant is not going to save the world by using any human means such as power, popularity and violence, but with humility and gentleness instead. Isaiah's other predictions in today's reading are also true of the life of Jesus. The Lord says, I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind and to bring prisoners out from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. Friends, our Lord Jesus fulfills all the things prophesied about him. From the four Gospels, we learn that Jesus teaches love, compassion, kindness and gentleness through stories, parables and his own life. He comforts the weak and the broken-hearted. He cures the sick and forgives the guilty. He talks to sinners and warns them not to sin anymore. He cares for the poor and feeds the hungry. He quotes the scriptures and reminds people to observe faithfully the law of God. He does not arouse the emotions of the people and cause trouble, but uses the power of his word to stir their hearts. He does not explode in anger, but bears abuses and mockeries. He walks quietly to the cross. While on the cross, he looks at them with compassion and pleads with God the Father for their forgiveness. Friends, what is the message for us? God wants us to know the truth and believe in him. The truth is that Jesus is God's servant son, sent as light to the world to enlighten everyone and all those who walk with him in love and humility and fellowship with him and with one another will definitely inherit hope, peace, joy, love and light. Friends, our faith in God is not mere blind faith but one that is based on reason and evidence. On the day of our baptism, we have made our promises. If we have been baptized as infants, our parents and godparents would have made them for us. To God, that we would continually seek the truth and believe in Him. However, we often fail in our promises. We may be one of the Christian believers who have not yet wholeheartedly and fully come to believe in the truth that we have received through Jesus Christ, the servant Son of God the Father. Therefore, as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord today, let us renew our own baptismal promises. Amen. God bless you.